similar way, um, I would like to also acknowledge the work of the late Angela Hartwig and the Women's Council, as it was known then. As many in this place will know, Angela Hartwig was a lifelong campaigner for women affected by family and domestic violence. She was a powerful advocate for change, and she approached that task with patience and tenacity over many decades. Under her leadership, the Women's Council achieved a number of things, but one of the, one of the things they um, did was commence the tradition of a silent march and memorial service each year in November um, to coincide with the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. Uh, I have to say I've been profoundly moved on the occasions that I've attended those events, um, particularly moved by the personal stories from victims of family and domestic violence that were shared. Um, I think every year uh, there was someone who would share their story. Um, and often these were very harrowing and confronting stories, and I've got to say I have great admiration for those who were able to tell what is a very difficult personal story uh, in quite a public way. But it is a profound way that um, I think we can affect change. The event also recognises those who have died as a result of family and domestic violence in the previous 12 months by reading out their gender, their age and where they lived. And I think that is an, also an incredibly powerful way to illustrate the reality of those who die from family and domestic violence each year. Uh, members, there are men and women amongst the number. They are very young and sometimes very old. And I think it is, again, an important way to illustrate that it is something that impacts on us all. During my time in my former role as Secretary of Unions WA, I felt very strongly that community leaders should stand up to be counted on this very important community issue. My own awareness about family and... Can I speak a short extension, please? Yes, thank you. My own awareness about family and domestic violence came during my time as an organiser with the Australian Services Union um, some time ago, where I was responsible for organising workers who worked in women's refuges. And during this time, it became really clear to me, um, at a time when family and domestic violence wasn't a topic that was um, regularly referred to um, in the news and it wasn't a matter that was on mind, people's minds particularly, but during this time, it became very clear to me that the many excellent staff who worked in women's refuges were doing very difficult, very demanding and complex work. They were providing practical support um, to women, mostly women, who were seeking, uh, who were leaving violent relationships, but also emotional support and also providing crisis counselling to women at a time that they were most vulnerable and distressed. Uh, I was particularly impressed by the workers in women's refuges, incredibly hardworking, uh, incredibly skilled, incredibly dedicated to the work that they did, and I have uh, still to this great to this day, a great respect and admiration for them all. It became clear to me that the demands for their services were great in the community, and I began to get an understanding, I guess, of the extent of family and domestic violence within our community. And up until this time, like many others, uh, it wasn't something that I'd particularly thought about much before. I'd never experienced it, and uh, was never aware that anyone in my life had experienced it, although statistics would tell us now that that's probably not the case. But at that time, for too long, family and domestic violence had been carried out behind closed doors in the family home mostly. And for years, those that perpetrated violence were protected by the idea that what happened in the family home was a private matter and it was nobody else's business. So as a society, as a community, we tended to turn a blind eye and remain silent. And this, members, is one of the reasons why family violence has remained entrenched for so long. And I think it's one of the most important things that we can all do as community leaders to speak up and to speak out. And in particular, I think, to break the stereotypes about who family and domestic violence affects. The campaigner um, that we, we all, I think, are aware of, Rosie Batty, has done excellent work making this point, that family and domestic violence can affect anyone that it doesn't just happen to people in certain suburbs, it doesn't just happen to those from certain socioeconomic backgrounds, it doesn't just affect people who are poor or working class or uneducated, that in fact family and domestic violence is happening in homes right across our suburbs, right across our regional areas. It happens um, to people who are young and old and in families um, of all income levels.